I want to move on to the third part of your book, which is looking at the crowd, the bold crowd. And you talk about crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. Why is this such an important shift that we're now see taking place? So we just were talking about how do you perform at speed and at scale, right? And how do you think at scale? You also got to perform at scale. And that's where these crowd-powered tools come in handy because they let anybody sort of level up the scale of the game they're going to play. And when you say crowd-powered tools, all we're saying is, look, there are 3 billion people online, and over the next five years or so, that number is going to close to double, right? And if Google and Facebook and everybody else, SpaceX, have their way and we get ubiquitous internet everywhere – you know, it's going to be 7 billion people online. So the crowd is huge and it's growing. And there are ways to tap that crowd to level up your game. The obvious one that everybody knows about is crowdfunding, right? It's asking the crowd for money. I've got a neat idea. I'm going to ask the crowd for money and they're going to fund it. And that way I can bypass the traditional kind of fundraising system. 50% of the people, companies who need money, actually, it's funny, 50% of all companies fail in the first five years in America because of lack of access to capital. Yet 50% of the people who lack that capital won't even go ask for money because the system is so stacked against them. They know it's hopeless, right? And that's where crowdfunding comes in, right? Exactly. And what people don't get, really, I mean, everybody's heard of crowdfunding. This is no great secret. Two things are different today. One, it's gotten really big, right? It was a $500 million market in 2009 when it first showed up. But that number, some people are saying it's going to go up to $150 billion by 2025. That's three times the venture capital funding, more than three times the venture capital funding available today, right? So it's a massive uptick in what's available. And some of these campaigns, right, another crowdfunding record was just set. Eric Megakovsky said it with the second iteration of his Pebble Watch, and he raised $20 million online. It's a huge sum of money, right? So big deals are going down. The scope of what is crowdfundable used to be, you know, I got a neat idea for a film or a video or here's a product and I'm going to pre-sell it to you has gotten more conceptual. We're crowdfunding bigger and bigger things. Peter Diamandis, my partner, crowdfunded a space telescope, right, that is the first step towards unlocking kind of the new field of asteroid mining, right? He has an asteroid mining company. The first thing they need is a space-based telescope to detect asteroids. He ran a crowdfunding campaign and raised $1.5 million for the first telescope of this kind. So, you know, it scales up, it can put big ideas into the world, and anybody can play this game. The second half of that story, and this is the other thing we do in Bold, is it's actually a much more mature industry than anybody believes, and there are right and wrong ways to play the game. And in fact, there are so many of these, we had to do a giant meta-analysis of, I think it was over 80 different studies, articles, reports, ways to crowdfund. And then we interviewed all the kind of top crowdfunding companies and talked to you know what were their best practices and people who ran big crowdfunding campaigns like Eric Mikoski, who I just mentioned, right? And we filtered this down into a set of best practices. To the best of our knowledge, it's the only time anybody's done this. And as of right now, it seems to be the most comprehensive guide to this stuff. I'm quite sure that within six months, somebody else is going to write a better one because this stuff is moving fast. But for right now, it's really comprehensive and people are finding it very useful. We're getting letters from people who are like, I read your stuff launched a crowdfunding campaign, and it's working, you know, that kind of thing. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. 